Could an illicit party drug hold the key to providing relief for sufferers of Parkinson's disease? Scientists at the University of Western Australia believe the street drug ecstasy contains a compound that could help control the shakes that afflict sufferers. The new drug candidate they've developed has shown the potential to extend the effectiveness of existing therapies, but as always, money is the key. And until the UWA chemists find an investor to bankroll their work, this promising project could remain in the lab. Mark Bennett reports. Get it, come on, you got it. <laughs> Good man, okay. Okay, walking over the lines, big high steps. It's said Parkinson's disease is not a death sentence, it's a life sentence. And in Australia, 80,000 people suffer from the complex neurological illness for which there is no known cure. And as yet, no lasting relief. The characteristic tremors are caused by the loss of a brain chemical called dopamine, vital for transmitting signals for muscle control. The breakdown results in sufferers freezing up. Current generation drugs only offer temporary help. Englishman Tim Lawrence developed Parkinson's as a young man. His jerky movement is a condition called dyskinesia, a side effect of the therapy drug levodopa. On a night of partying in London, he took the dance drug, Ecstasy, and made a chance discovery. His shakes disappeared. In an experiment, he filmed the effects of taking Ecstasy over two days. On day one, he was drug free, but on day two, he took Ecstasy, and the effect was dramatic. He regained enough control to enable him to do this somersault and other simple everyday tasks. From his agony, ecstasy may have provided some relief, but the young stuntman's inadvertent discovery posed a challenge for medicinal chemists. The drug that's probably most commonly sold as ecstasy is known as, well, MDMA for short, methylene dioxymethamphetamine. Um, so we are specifically using MDMA as the, the basis for this research. Matthew Piggott heads up a research team at UWA that is looking for a new compound from the illicit street drug that won't make users high and won't be toxic to the brain. As far as I know, no one has looked at, um, at basically changing the MUMA, making it into something similar but slightly different uh, to try and dissociate the beneficial effects from that psychoactivity. But why does a dance drug control involuntary movement? And could it help existing therapy drugs work more effectively without the disabling side effects? This is the, uh, the structure of, of MDMA. And what we imagine, what, what we um, think about doing is, is changing the structure. Matthew Piggott's idea is to create not a new drug, but a drug candidate to extend the relief period of existing therapies. So MDMA is a single chemical entity that has a single structure. We imagine tinkering around with that structure a bit like molecular Lego, and we take a little bit off here and we add a little bit of something else on. We change the shape of the molecule and that affects its biological properties. In 2004, Matthew Piggott's team had a stroke of luck they found an analogue compound in MDMA. They called it UWA-101. It can extend the therapeutic effects, or the on-time, of levodopa by 30%. UWA-101's great potential is to help younger sufferers who face a lifetime of taking drugs to combat Parkinson's. So young, young onset Parkinson's patients, while they're uh, rarer than, you know, later age onset uh, Parkinson's patients. Uh, they're certainly a group that could potentially benefit from this research um, in the long term. There's another reason why Matthew Piggott has made this research his life's goal, and it's very close to home. My dad was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease when I, um, well, when he, he was 41, and I was doing honours uh, in the chemistry department here at UWA at the time. John Piggott's Parkinson's affliction was so severe only radical deep brain stimulation could give him his life back. I was hopeful at the outset of my uh, academic career that you know maybe if I got lucky I might be able to discover something that could potentially um, have a beneficial effect on, on, on my father. 
The chance to develop less invasive therapy drugs focused Matthew Pickett's career, but he faces difficulties in attracting funding because it's not a new idea to research party drugs as a basis for developing new therapeutic drugs. And working with MDMA carried some baggage. Some reviewers of papers, for example, and also grant applications have thought that this is a, a gimmick because we're basing it on an, on an illicit drug. Um, but we don't think it's a gimmick. When he published his findings eight years ago, pharmaceutical companies could not then place a controlling patent on the compound. And that also meant no vital ongoing research money. To get a drug to market costs in the order of a billion dollars. And to get a, a pharmaceutical company to make that kind of investment, it's a massive investment, they have to be able to uh, ensure that they're going to get some of that money back. In fact, they need to get all that money back plus some more. Um, and the only way that they can really do that is if they're able to patent the drug. So it was back to the laboratory to find another subcompound to create a new drug candidate. The gap between where we are and getting it ready for a pharmaceutical company to pick up and take on, um, you know, that, that can cost in the order of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, yeah, even once you have the compound ready to go. Right now, the UWA team are working in conjunction with a group of Toronto Parkinson's disease researchers, looking at trialling UWA 101 in animal models. And early indications are the drug successfully extends relief without disabling dyskinesia. The next breakthrough could just be a matter of time and money. I think it's a matter of... Uh being persistent, keeping in there, trying to be productive, and then uh, hopefully eventually the cards will fall your way and you get the funding. Mark Bennett reporting there.